Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, where I'm continuing along with playing the German campaign as much as I can before 1.4 drops. Uh, the Eisenwälzer hey, is going to take on the Sully in our opening matchup. Um, there was an episode recently, I don't know if it's not the yesterday's one, but I think it was the one before, where I was very uh, lukewarm. <laughs> about 1.4, particularly the armor limits. However, thanks to some help of the uh, excellent members of my Discord community, uh, link in the description, by the way, um, I have figured out how to actually mod the game or make very, very minor edits to the game. And on uh, 1.3.9.9 I was able to mess around with the armor limits so I'm hoping that when 1.4 drops I can just restore the old uh, aka current armor limits um, more news on that when 1.4 is actually out and when uh, the updates settle down a little bit and uh, I'm able to uh, get it to work. Um, I also, <laughs> when I was messing around, uh, just trying to learn how how it worked, um, removed the armor limits completely because that's the thing you can do. Uh, it's pretty fun, but um, yeah, it does cause the AI quite a lot of problems. Because it, it doesn't basically the AI builder. If you take the limits off, it gets into a situation where it will uh, try and give a ship, you know, 400 inches of armor, and then can't complete the design process. So it's a funny mod, but uh, not really a practical one. Anyway, Eisenwald's uh, completely destroying the Sally there. No problem at all. Um, that's all there was this month. So I'm just going to end the turn, and I'm going to see you in, what will it be, May. Hello, welcome back to the shipyard, where I have unlocked triple turrets. So I think it's a good idea to have a go at the last <laughs> light cruiser design, the LK-3. Um... Yes, I know I've only just built the LK2s, but LK3s, uh, we could go with 7s or 6s. Uh, the LK2s are running 6-inch, so I'm tempted to also go with 6-inch triples on the LK3. Um, just because I know that the, the GKs are running 8s, so... It gives you a, a, a reasonable kind of step, and I'm hoping as well the uh, the weights work out okay on this. Right, next funnels. I seem to remember. Yeah, we can. We can put two funnels on. Lovely. Now secondary guns. Well, we do have Mark Four two inch. Uh, Singles? Yeah, singles. I can put them up here if I run singles. But I think it's better to run triples. Uh, just for a little bit of uh, convoy shooting. We can run a bank, a side bank of torpedoes underwaters. And that gives us a nice clean, clean look. Uh, it should be very easy to manage. Uh, in terms of speed, this thing can do 35.5, uh, so they'll be noticeably faster than the L... Well, actually, no, because I was able to push the speed of the LKT. So let's go for 35 to start with. We obviously want maximum range on these because uh, their main duty is going to be convoy protection and raiding. So for that reason, we're also going to run them on diesels. It's a 37,000 kilometers of range, which is very nice. We do have access to Crypt 5, which is pretty, pretty pretty, nice. We could go Citadel 5, but I'm going to be very German about it, and I'm going to stick with Turtleback, even though it's heavy as anything, and 
possibly broken. <laughs> Although it's a lot less broken than it used to be. We're going to go with the tube powder super heavies. Uh, auto loaders is a new feature. 21 inch fast torps because those are fine. Wait, Quizzen's five. Ooh, fancy. An RDF and a mine layer. And we are still underweight. That is excellent because we haven't even tacked on any armor yet. Can we make the guns longer? Make them 45 caliber? Yes, we can. Uh, two inch can be 55s. Can't put armor on the on those. We can max armor the turrets. And then if we go for a six inch main belt, and then three, 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 one point five, one point five, one point five, six. A ninety really ninety three. I'm surprised that the engine efficiency only being <laughs> say say only ninety nine point three, but that's fine. Um we have a lot of spare displacement. We could go for a uniform six inch belt, which is a very, very heavily uh, protected ship. Um, do you have a little bit of an aft weight offset? Zero point one. Just gonna shift things around very slightly. I've got the weight to spare. So basically what I'm trying to do here is to give me slightly better firing angles on the guns. Because I have the spare weight to do it. Normally I tuck them right in. But we're going to have them spread out a little bit. So that we can have um, just a bit just a bit better angles on the guns. So that they can... Because the uh, L, uh, light cruisers tend to manoeuvre quite a lot. And there we go. Very fast design. Didn't really have to worry about that too much at all. 10,000 tonnes. So same displacement as the LK2, but faster with more guns. Yes, very nice. Very nice indeed. And more torpedoes. Just a better overall. Uh, I'm going to order up 16 of these again. Um, and I'm going to have to think of, uh, think of a suitable theme to name them. But yes, we're going to get 16 of these LK3s under construction. And uh, I think I think they will do, will do well. But it's also our last chance. It's, just, it's our last light cruise hold. So <laughs> that's it. This is the, the final evolution of German light cruise design <laughs> in like 1920. Okay, I'll save that. I'll name the ships and I'll see you on the ship screen in a moment. All right, there we go. Uh, the Zugspitz, Spitzer to the Wurmberg. Uh, and again, I'm gonna let the computer distribute them. And that'll be our entire cruiser force. The LK2s are finished. Uh, so I'm gonna set them to sea control. Uh, and the LK1s, wherever they've gone. Here they are. I'm going to uh, start trimming. This one's fine, fine. That one's got a lot of defects. So I'm going to scrap her. You aren't that bad, but we're yeah, well. You're in a useful place. We're going to leave you. You we can scrap. You're fine. You're also fine. You'll find two. Oh, this was because I was down to GK3s. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I didn't scrap any of them by accident. Good. 
Um, but yes, these ships are going to be transferred to the reserve, apart from uh, Handelstern, which is going to stay stay active for now, and so is the Handelsbefuere and the Kustenschutz, because they're doing uh, important jobs. But the others are going to go into the reserves. Lovely stuff. Uh, just so that we can get the, the LK2s and the LK3s out and about. And that is it for this month. So I'm going to end the turn and I'll see you in June. Welcome back. Uh, I'm fairly into this battle by now, but um, I did want to show it. Uh, we have a light cruiser, a protected cruiser, trying to run away from uh, the Blindervater, the Midgard, and the other ships uh, currently blockading France. She keeps disappearing into the smoke and things. Um, it's not going to be super interesting. The smoke will run out. I'll smack her to bits and sink her. Uh, but when that happens, I will see you on the post-battle results screen. <laughs> there we go. As I said, wasn't ever really in doubt. Right, I'm going to head back to the map. All right. Uh, next up, we have the Seller against the Congreve. Uh, Devastation class, which I've been butchering. But this is the first time we get to see the LK2 in action, I'm pretty sure. Um, I just <laughs> started building the LK3. And yeah, the L LK2 with its very weird profile. It's her first chance at glory. It's very odd design. I am glad that I, uh, I, I I did come back and and uh, try and build something on this hull. Why this set of boats doesn't remove and the others do, I have no idea. But it makes building on it very awkward. But these uh, new double bar bets uh, have saved the day. Still weirdly balanced. It looks like this should be incredibly aft heavy because the engine rooms are back here. But no, apparently it is very slightly forward. <laughs> uh, still, a light cruiser, even a even a brand new light cruiser, shouldn't be any threat to an armoured cruiser, right? What do you think, uh, Frenchie? Close enough now, we can start throwing rounds at the target. Let the uh, torpedo crew really dial in the uh, firing solution and then completely botch it. Oh, no, they, they actually fired at a reasonable time. I'm so sorry, I was <laughs> talking trash. That's that's a good spread. Whether If that misses, fair enough. Uh, that's just down to the Congreve, but the actual firing, that's that's decent. These two are a little bit too close together, but otherwise, I think that's fine. Congreve is going to get hit. One of them was a dud, but the other one was not. And that is a lot of damage to the forward section on the Congreve. Marcella dodges out of the way of uh, enemy torpedo. Congreve sinks. Well, that was a fairly uh, a fairly good demonstration <laughs> of what uh, the LK2s can do. Uh, only took 600 damage in that engagement from 30 hits. 
Of course, the Congrove didn't land any hits with her big eight and a half inch guns. Um, yeah. Stop building these fronts. Please. <laughs> Please stop building them. Oh my goodness. Or at least give them better quality armor or something. Anyway, very pleased with that. Uh, I'm going to head back to the map. I'm going to end the turn and I'll see you in July. All right, July looks relatively busy, although the ambush I will probably skip off camera. We have the Freeburg in LK2 again uh, against the Europa class. Now, the Europa class is a little bit better than Devastations in theory. However, that armor quality is just so bad. I think we might be able to punch through it with the six-inch guns. So, um, yeah, could be interesting. Could be very interesting. Is it Freeburg or Freiburg? I don't know. German speakers? I know you watched the channel. Uh, correct me, please. <laughs> <laughs> Keep correcting me. Uh, I haven't gone back through all the ship names to fix the spelling mistakes. I'm sorry. I know you've been commenting about it. Um, but I have been including umlauts with the new ships. <laughs> and other accents as necessary. Um, now that I've worked out how to type them. Right. What are you up to? Running away. Oh, Britain. How disappointing. Uh, stern chase. Stern chases are not my favourite. And I'm not going to have anything to say. So I'm going to time lapse this battle. At least until I get close enough. And there we go. All done. Lovely stuff. Right, what else have we got this month? Okay, uh, next up we have the Ambeskabar. She's found the Guedon. This is... We've seen this a lot. Uh, so I'm just going to time-lapse this battle in its entirety. Uh, because I don't think this is going to be particularly worth commenting on. But you could enjoy the uh, the, the pretty visuals. And there we go. Like I said, wasn't going to take very long. Okay, back to the map. All right. Um, the Terrible has made a terrible mistake and has brought the uh, Medea and the Raccoon along for the ride because they've bumped into the Nilfheim and her fleet. Uh, yeah, this is just going to be a, a brutal smackdown. Uh, but it does get me a chance to look at the fleet, I guess, which is, which is nice. Yeah, just just the, the apart from the Americans, if the Americans would blob up and you know send uh, a big old fleet at me, we might have uh, some interesting battles. But at the moment, unless they do that, it's all very bitty. Uh, for which I, I do apologise. It's just the way of it. Sometimes wars in UAD tend you tend to have a big battle quite near the start, and then lots and lots and lots of smaller ones while you go around navally invading everybody. But because there's so much going on, uh, all of the enemies that I'm fighting have other opponents to worry about. And, all, all this stuff um, going on. Yeah, it's where are the hell the destroyers going? Oh, did we hit the? Oh, this is going to be a ghost battle, isn't it? Well, that's uh, that's disappointing. I guess I got to witter on about how wars work, but yeah, we're at the kind of bitty stage where there's not really too much to do. So, 
Um, it's just the way of it. I'm going to end the turn. Go on to the next month. Well, I could if I press the... Well, we have successfully taken the Ivory Coast. Very nice. Uh, next target is going to be Gabon. Or Gabon. Uh, I think it's Gabon. Um, which we should be able to invade immediately. Yes, we can. Uh, and then it'll be the middle Congo. So let's move the fleet again. <laughs> and just yeah, delete all of this. We'll uh, stop off in uh, Gambia. And then we'll move over to the Caribbean. Start moving against the United States. That might force them to do something. Yurik is sitting right here, by the way. She's sinking a whole bunch of stuff in the kind of the list of, of of sunk convoys every turn. But um yeah the Americans just seem to want to hang out in the Central Atlantic for reasons. Um but it is worth pointing out that they are at war not just with us, but also the French and the Italians and the Hungarians and the Chinese. Uh, so yeah, they're not really focused on us at the moment. Um even though they do have ships floating about. Uh, next turn we'll get to see whether this uh, actually works or not. Um, which is good. Uh, we've got another ambush again. I, I, I really don't want to do these. I, I, I seriously wish there was a, there was a way to uh, just tell the game that I don't want to do destroyer ambushes because it's just, it's just time waste of time so i'm gonna end the turn i'm gonna get rid of this battle i'm gonna end the turn and uh see how the conquest of the cap third islands goes all right welcome back um i want to have another crack at the advanced armor cruiser one so this would be our s this would be the sk1 in theory um yeah so the plan remains the same uh ooh, what's the difference in base accuracy it's not that big and this is 600 tons heavier so i'm actually going to go with the triangular tower one and there's not a lot of difference in weights here so we'll go with the secondary tower five so that saved me a little bit of weight because that was the problem before. We just ran out of ran out of puff with the weight. We want maximum range for sure. Uh, we want to go double diesel because that is a very powerful setup. Um, and yeah, I really, 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 really want eleven inch guns, and we're gonna go for triples right out the gate. We're going to try it. Oh yeah, this is the longer hull, isn't it? Because that was part of the problem I was running into. Uh, medium bob it. And guns. There we go. 11 inch 50 caliber guns. Okay. Okay. We want crit 5. We want bob it 5. We want a torpedo 5. Double bottom hull. Uh, turtle back, even though it makes it heavy for uh, Germans. Uh, base fuse, cap ballistic, TNT4, oh, that's new. Tube powder, super heavies, with an auto loader and electrohydro tube turrets. Top of the range rangefinder, radio, RDF, no depth charge, and we are underweight. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. We can really make something of these. Then and yes, I know I've unlocked the Armored Cruiser 2 as well. However, that is going away. I wanted to build the uh, SK ones first, uh, just just to get just to get them on the go. Uh, I haven't done secondary guns yet, which I should do. I think as I discovered last time, the the fives don't. You can get like one pair of fives in. So we're just going to go two inch. See, I did discover, yeah, the jewels have extra slots, but they're not actually that useful. So we're going to go, um, 
going to go two inch. Like, uh, like, no, not those ones. Like so. So just a, a little array of two inch guns. Obviously, we're going to need a funnel. Um, something along these lines, I think. Yes, right. Now, armor wise, I'd love to go for a 12. <laughs> yes, that's where we ran into problems last time. 12, a 12 6 scheme is going to be just too heavy, isn't it? Three, three. Yes, 112 percent of weight. How much lighter is it on? All or nothing. Not much, actually. So we'll stick with the turtle back. But clearly, uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to make an adjustment. And I think the adjustment that I want to have a look at is going down to tw initially. Having a look at building it with three twin turrets gets me down to 106. The other option is actually doing a historical build ish, not really, but copying the uh, Deutschland class and going AB triples because. When I shift all these along a bit, we should be able to get our weight offset down. Pretty low. Yeah, point 0.1. Uh, can I move these back ever so slightly? See, now we're perfectly balanced and we are only 2% overweight. Hmm. Yes, that actually kind of works. I mean, we're way heavier than a Deutschland, but and way more armoured. <laughs> but that does work. That does work. And that's with utterly ludicrous levels of range. If we pull it back to only 38,000 tonnes, that kind of works. And that means that when we come to do the advanced armoured cruiser, Two, we can add the third turret. I don't normally do A, B. And six 11-inch guns is considerably less firepower than what I would normally put on a ship like this. But because it is, apart from uh, the secondary armor, it's not correct uh, for a start. But um, it's pretty close to an actual historical German ship. That's just like a Graf Spey uh, or a Deutschland class in in spirit, if not in the detail. It's very heavy. It's very expensive. Uh, it's a little bit pointless, one might argue, but I kind I kind of like it. I kind of like it. And assuming we don't run into target lock issues with this, which is the big problem with A B. Um, yeah, why not? It's definitely very different, hence the change to the SK moniker. Um, but I, I kind of like it. How much is it compared to a KK2? It's almost the same price. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the KK2 is objectively better. But, uh, of course, prices just spiral as you go through the campaign. Um... It's interesting. I like it. Deutschland class. Why not? Why not? Right, I'm going to get these under construction and uh, I'll show you the names in a second. 
All right, here we are, Deutschland, Admiral Scheer, and Admiral Graf Spey, as indeed was historical. I'm only building three of them. We'll stick to the historical idea. They're a little bit of an experiment. We'll see how they do. Um, and uh, yeah, why not? The SK-1, brand new design. There you go. Uh, there are a couple of convoy battles, but uh, I'm going to save those for the next episode. And uh, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts.